Welcome to the third episode of History Bites in 2022. My name is Dawn Owen and I'm the curator at Guelph Museums. History Bites is a one hour long casual conversation during which we chat about the latest news events and exhibitions and other happenings at Guelph Museums. Today, I'm in conversation with some of the artists and community members who work together on a project called Mind the Gap, Intergenerational Connectivity Between Seniors and Youth. History Bites airs on Facebook Live at noon on the third Wednesday of every month. A recording of today's uh, History Bites will be available through the Museum Everywhere portal on our website and on our socials after the broadcast. I am recording today's program in Guelph, Ontario. And before I introduce and welcome our guests, I'd like to focus our thoughts uh, within an awareness and acknowledgement of the land. Guelph is located on the ancestral homelands of the Anishinaabeg peoples, specifically the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. The place we now call Guelph is on land that is described in the Between the Lakes Purchase, number three treaty of 1792, an agreement between the Mississaugas of the Credit and the British Crown concerning over 3 million acres of land between Lakes Huron, Ontario, and Erie. Today, Guelph is home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. Guelph Museums commits to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action and to doing more to learn, share, and support truth and healing. When we gather, we spend time in conversation about the land, its history, and its peoples. We continue to grow our, our knowledge and our relationships with our treaty partner, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and with the many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples who call Guelph home. This informs all that we do at the museum and underscores our commitment to each other today and for the health and well being of future generations. Today's conversation centers on the project called Mind the Gap, Intergenerational Connectivity Between Seniors and Youth, organized by Center Three uh, for Artistic and Social Practice and presented at the Guelph Civic Museum. Mind the Gap was a series of workshops that became an exhibition of artworks co-created by a community of seniors and youths working with practicing artists in both Hamilton and Guelph. The project aimed to decrease in isolation among the participants and to bridge their generational gap. Centered in collaborative storytelling, multimedia installation, and experimental portraiture, artists Becky, excuse me, Becky Katz and Shiler Sewell in Hamilton, as well as Dawn Matheson in Guelph, were each joined by three seniors and three youths paired together. And they are Joanne and Janiel, Suad and Ren and Judith and Sabomi. Joining me today are Alex Jacobs Bloom, artist and former assistant director at Center Three, artist facilitators, Becky Katz and Shiler Sewell, and community participants, Suad, Judith and Ren. So it's my great pleasure, pleasure now to share some information about our, our um, guests today on History Bites. And I'm gonna start with Alex Jacobs Bloom who is of the Lower Cayuga Nation of Six Nations of the Grand River Territory and of mixed European heritage. She is an emerging artist and curator. I would say you're a full-fledged artist and curator, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> Alex's photo-based practice explores the duality of her identity through visual storytelling. Her work is focused on the land that has sustained her family for generations. She navigates indigeneity, reclamation, resiliency, and healing while challenging colonial structures. Welcome, Alex, to History Bites. Uh, Scano, everyone. Uh, it's really great to be here, part of this conversation. And it's really great to see everyone again and just be in this space. It feels really good. Yeah. Thanks so much, Alex. Uh, I'm also delighted to introduce Becky Katz. Becky is a Hamilton-based artist, activist, and experimental musician, and art education facilitator and community arts practitioner. She is also the co-founder and artistic director of Strange Ways Music Festival. Becky has worked with Center Three for artistic and social practice for, for the past 13 years. And in 2018, she received the Hamilton Arts Award for Art, edu art Education and Community Art. 
Uh, welcome, Becky. Wow. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy that you're here. Me too. And now I'd love to introduce Shyler Sewell, who is an Anishinaabe Kwe storyteller from Garden River First Nation. Shyler uses the power of stories to cultivate connections and community. She is passionate about the care that is shown within and between Indigenous, Black, and racialized communities when stories are being shared. She hopes that her work as a literary artist and facilitator will inspire people to cultivate their own connections and community. Welcome, Shyler. Honey, thanks for having me today. So delighted that you're here. Okay, and uh, now I'll also introduce our, our, community, uh, our community members who are on the call. Uh, first, I'll start with Suad Badri. Uh, Suad came to Hamilton eight years ago as a refugee. Inspired by her heritage of women empowerment, she opted for advocating for her community while overcoming settlement barriers. Her passion for art finally landed her uh, at Centre 3 to take part in different projects. Uh, including this one, Intergenerational Connectivity, which she says is the most dear to her. Uh, Suad has a BSc in Engineering, an MSc in Environmental Studies, and a PhD in Geography of Energy. Wow. She was part of Afad University for Women in Sudan for 20 years before coming to Canada. My golly, Suad, welcome to History Bites. Uh, thank you, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here today. Well, we're delighted to have you. Thank you. Next, I'll, I'll introduce Ren. Uh, Ren Pattison, whose pronouns are she, her, is an artist and fashion designer student, uh, excuse me, fashion design student from Shelburne, Ontario. Ren has a passion for drawing, painting, and embroidery. Welcome, Ren. Hi, thank you for having me. It's absolutely wonderful that you're here, to, here today. And last but definitely not least, Judith, I'm uh, delighted to introduce you. Uh, Judith Eden has retired from teaching English, which gave her the opportunity to create drama clubs. Now she finds herself busy at the Guelph Little Theatre building, decorating set, sorry, building, decorating sets and producing plays. So you're both at the theatre building and also building the sets. Uh, her experiences in schools were as valuable as, uh, as they are today as a volunteer at Guelph Little Theatre. Uh, it's a love thing. Um, from my heart to yours, Judith, a welcome to History Bites. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> well, it's an absolute delight. And I'd love to um, just launch right into our conversation. Uh, and as, uh, as we are sharing today, I would just uh, welcome you to um, contribute as you see fit, as you're comfortable. Um, I would imagine that, I know I have a whole load of questions for everybody on the call today, but uh, if you have questions for each other or you um, have conversation that you'd like to create, um, please feel free. Uh, this is an open uh, uh, space for conversation and for sharing as you've done so beautifully in the uh, Intergenerational Connectivity Project. Um, I will shout out Don Matheson, who as one of the artist facilitators uh, in the project also gave it, gave the exhibition side of the project its, uh, its main title, which is Mind the Gap. We thought that um, it was uh, slightly gentler on the, on the memory and on the tongue to say <laughs> mind the gap as opposed to intergenerational connectivity. <laughs> I'm glad I got a giggle out of that one. Uh, so as we're chatting today, I'll be referring to the project as Mind the Gap just for the ease uh, of our conversation. And to connect people, of course, with the exhibition, which is on view right now at the Guelph Civic Museum. So let's get started. Um, I would really love to start with you, Alex, uh, because uh, you were uh, the visionary at the start of the project. And I sort of invite everybody to cast our minds back to March of 2020. Um, that's probably a, a, a month and a year that, <laughs> that um, brings a lot to the forefront in your minds. But just before this thing called the pandemic started, Alex, you had just moved actually from the Guelph Civic Museum uh, to Center 3 at the time in the role of assistant director. 
And uh, Mind the Gap was one of your first projects that you created. And I'm super curious to hear from you, um, what were your motivations when you started to think about creating this project? Yeah, for sure. It was um, it was really wild to think about that time because, uh, like you were saying, I just transitioned from my role at Guelph Museums as the Indigenous Community Relations Coordinator to my role at Center Three, um, and so I think I was maybe in the office for about three days, and then we went into lockdown. Um, and I also deeply apologize for the title. <laughs> I know it's very wordy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's on me <laughs> and I own that. Um, but so what really like uh, sparked the idea for the project was like thinking about the effects of the pandemic and really just being in like this kind of scary time of like uncertainty and, and social isolation. Um, and especially like among uh, vulnerable, vulnerable communities like older adults and youth. Yeah. So really the goal of the project was to connect older adults and youth and in, in a meaningful way and collaborative way um, where there was an opportunity to build new relationships and experiment with new artistic mediums and just learn and have fun with one another and, and with the artists in their communities. Um, and it also felt really special to kind of bring together um, the two cities like Hamilton and Guelph that I just I feel such a strong connection to, you know, like having lived in Guelph when I was working at the museum. Um, but I, like, I'm born and raised in Hamilton. So it was kind of exciting to kind of like bridge the relationships between between the communities. And then to have Guelph Museums and, and UDON be a part of the project also felt like really special um, in that continuation of our relationship. Um, and it was also like just so amazing to bring together like three incredible artists like Shiler, Becky, and Dawn, Dawn Matheson, um, I, who like I just admire so much and um, they all engage in community arts and in various ways and, and they all operate from a place of love and care. So I, I learned a lot from them throughout the project. And, and I also just wanted to give like an extra shout out to Shiler, who is, it's so exciting to watch your, your practice grow and apply your experience um, into your new role at InPath. Like it's just, it's so awesome to, to watch you blossom. Um, so I was the, the project manager for Mind the Gap at the beginning of, um, from the beginning and then till April, 2021. And that's when Becky took over for me as project manager. And I left my role to kind of focus on my artistic practice. Um, but, you know, I'm really excited to, to visit the museum and see the final uh, results in person. Um, and I'm just so, so grateful to everybody that's on this project. Like that, it, it honestly means the world to me. Um, and it's, it's near and dear to my heart as well. So thank you. Thanks so much, Alex. And um, may I say also, I mean, I remember you giving me a call, I mean, I'm, I will confess, uh, when Alex decided to move to Center 3, I said, amazing opportunity, you are going to do brilliant things, case in point, this project that we're talking about today. But I was a little bit heartbroken because I had gotten very used to working with Alex every single day. Uh, and, uh, and so I feel like um, in a way that this project and maybe this conversation has brought us full circle again, back into that kind of um, dialogue where we, sh where we think and share and uh, learn together. Um, and so I'm, I'm also super, super grateful to you uh, for including Guelph Museums in that initial invitation to say, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this project for all the reasons you've just so um, articulately just described and um, to say that, you know, that you trusted us in the museum here to be able to host and support and carry the, 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 um, the learnings that would happen that frankly at that point we couldn't predict, right? We didn't know where this project was gonna go um, sort of in those original um, initial conversations. So it's hard to believe that we're, um, we're at this point in that, in that journey. Um, I know over the, the course of the project itself because of the pandemic and about a million other things uh, that I'm sure you're all thinking about uh, in your minds as we're chatting at the moment, um, you know, the project unfolded in interesting and curious and complicated ways, but to be at the place now where we can actually um, host an exhibition, share some of that journey with visitors to the museum, um, to be in the space and, and, and to know each of you and also the, your colleagues who are not on the call today um, is just such an honor. And uh, I'm delighted to be able to uh, be one of the folks 
facilitating and supporting uh, access to this project. Judith, yes. Alex, I'd like to uh, ask you a question. This is a wonderful uh, springboard, your idea of Mind the Gap. So Mind the Gap, and you might have already thought of this, it can be an ongoing venture. Mind the Gap between sexes, which is obvious we've got a problem even today about that. Mind the gap about the class system of our society. Mind the gap about the difference in cultures. Mind the gap, you know, with um, well, ethnic groups of all sorts. So I could see mind the gap just going on and on every year with a different theme. And I say bravo to you. Um, I hope I hope that does happen. Thank you so much, Judith. I, I really appreciate that. And, and I've, I've been thinking a lot about this, um, this program since, um, since I, I've been engaged with it. And I, I really like, like I did learn a lot from it. And, um, and I've been thinking about like my connection with youth and like, what is my responsibility in uplifting and connecting with youth. And so I, I literally just submitted an, a grant um, last week um, to uh, engage with Indigenous youth um, at the Hamilton Regional Indian Center and doing arts-based programming very similar to what this program is. Um, and then their final um, projects will be um, exhibited at, at Supercrawl this year, this year in September. And uh, so Supercrawl is like a big, um, it's like kind of like a citywide um, event that happens um, once a year. And um, so it brings like tons and tons of folks there. So I was just thinking about like uplifting their practices and, and visibility and, um, you know, like how do we bring our, our narratives as indigenous folks to mainstream? Um, so thank you so much for your comment. I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. And I think too, um, Judith and Alex and everyone else uh, listening and, and thinking through this conversation um, that projects like this, I think are change makers. Uh, we may not in, a, in our next you know, exhibition or the next conversation that we step into um, necessarily be wearing the, the, uh, the title or carrying the title of Mind the Gap, but I think it's the, the principles of the project that we learn through and then we carry that intention into the work that we do. So I really, um, I really think that truly that this project is a change maker project, right? That really shifts the axis of the work that we do. Certainly we're taking it very seriously here in the museum and there's a ton of learnings um, that will still happen as we spend time with the project and as we move past it um, into the other work we're doing. And some of that work, of course, we're doing together. So um, I, I'd love to, uh, bring Becky and Shiler into the conversation now. Um, Becky and Shiler, uh, you are two of the three artist facilitators, along with John Matheson, to sign on to Mind the Gap. How did the concept of the project fit your artistic practices? Who would like to offer a reply or, or a response to that question first? Becky's saying Shiler, I think. <laughs> okay, cool. I don't mind. Yeah, so um, when Alex first approached me with this, um, so Alex and I actually met through another organization I used to work with uh, called We Matter. Um, and then Alex moved and started working at Center 3 and she was like, she sent me an email and I was like, Shiler, you want to be part of this new project? And I was like, oh yeah, cool. Um, at the time, I mean, I'm still pretty young, I'm 19 right now, um, but at the time I was younger and just blossoming into like my kind of facilitation arts thing. Um, and so I was like, oh, wow, that's, um, admittedly, one of my first thoughts was that's a lot of money um, to, be, <laughs> to be making. And I was also like, like um, my mom, who was also uh, very active in the arts community in Hamilton, she's like, Center 3 is such a cool organization to work with Shiler. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, cool, why not? I'll go for it. Um, and like the idea of bringing um, seniors and youth together was really inspiring too. Um, Cause I know like as I've grown up, I've, um, and also oftentimes in indigenous communities, it's like those the relationships between youth and elders are very, um, very special ones. So I was like, yeah, if I, if I can participate in this and like help facilitate those kind of connections, I'm like, that's such a cool opportunity. Um, and since then I've learned so much from Alex and I, I've loved working with her and so 
having this relationship with her so far. And then also everyone else at Center 3, it's been so cool connecting and also seeing your art now in the museum. Thanks so much, Shyler. Um, I'm starting to see um, a trend here, Alex, in that you, <laughs> Once, once you, once Alex works with you on a project, um, the friendship takes over, and 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 we move in waves with you into the work that you're doing. So I too feel so grateful to be uh, among the group of folks who are who are learning from you and with you uh, in this work. And and thank you so much, Tyler, uh, right. for that thoughtful reply. <laughs> Um, Becky, did you want to share some thoughts about why you said yes to this project? Well, to echo both what you said and what Shyler said about working with Alex, I also have firsthand experience with being taken by her presence and her vision and leadership. And I couldn't turn her down when she invited me to be part of it. Um, I've worked with her on a couple of projects previous, including at the Hamilton Regional Indian Center a couple of years ago. That was the first time we worked together. And uh, yeah, friendship took over and uh, I couldn't be more honored to be part of this project. It was interesting for me because I have experience working in the community with different demographics, but I can't recall any of them minding the gap in this way with, um, older adults and youth. I've done uh, projects with older adults and I've done projects with youth, but never have I ever meld the two together. So it was exciting for me. It was a challenge for sure. Um, and I just, I, I was really inspired by uh, the vulnerability that everyone basically was um, offering up in order to make more meaning of the project and it was just such a beautiful thing to be part of and facilitate so thank you thanks so much becky um you've sort of opened the door for my next question which i'll uh, invite ren to ponder and to re respond to um ren you are one of the three youth pr our participants who took part in uh, mind the gap and I'm, I'm interested to, to understand from you, um, you know, what, what, what were the learnings that you had through being part of the project? And, and more, I guess more basically, why did you decide to take part in the project in the first place? Um, so I, um, to start off, I, when I was introduced to the project, I was at a um, program called Youth Options. Um, where I was like, you know, learning how to like, you know, better myself and, you know, get better from, because I was in a bad mental space then. Mm. So when I was introduced to the, pro to the project, I thought that, that would be a good opportunity to kind of work on myself and like connect with um, new people and like, you know, see other perspectives I wasn't in the best mental space and so I thought that the project would be a good opportunity to um you know better myself and to hear other people's perspectives on you know their life experience and stuff and you know working with and I find um personally I find that working with you know older generations is calming to me because you know um when they give when they share their like knowledge and like experience and stuff it kind of gives me like clarity, I guess. Is that, if that's the right word? But yeah, I was just really interested in the project, you know, just um, to meet new people. And, you know, obviously I'm really into art. So that also piqued my interest too. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Ren. Um, also for your vulnerability in sharing how you just did, um, I, I um, am just really uh, grateful to you for, share, for sharing so directly with us. That's, um, that's a gift that you've just uh, given to this group and to this conversation, and I'm, I'm grateful to you for it. Um, but, you know, you, you spoke about sort of, um, you know, being interested in sort of uh, finding maybe relationship um, through a project like this. And of course, uh, you just shared that you um, 
you know, consider uh, working with elders and seniors in your community as a way to um, calm and center you uh, in, 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 in your life. Um, and I wondered if uh, we, I could invite Judith and Suad, who are two of the senior community participants in the project to maybe reflect a little bit on what Ren has shared. And, um, and my other, qu my question for you uh, is also, what made you curious and interested to take part in the project? I'm not sure if Judith or Suad prefers to share first. Go ahead, Go ahead Judith. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I follow. Okay, thank you, Suad. Um, okay, well, first of all, I was invited. And the two people that invited me, I, I have, uh, they were two adults and I respect them in, our, in my community. And so I wanted to find out more before I committed. And then once I heard about Don Owen and our, and our everything like that, I thought, sure, why not? And being a teacher, you know, I've been involved with youth a whole lot. And um, I didn't know what to expect, but I just thought to myself, don't be a teacher, just flow with this and just see what happens. And um, like Ren, I was really fortunate to meet up with Sabomi, who is um, shy and her life experience at 17 was to me uh, just remarkable. And hence, at the, when you get to the museum to see her story, um, we worked on her story because her story is, fantastic and being uh you know somebody who whose family came from Nigeria only a few years ago so um that really kind of broadened broadened my perspective of um other people's uh other people just life you know uh their family life and that and she was really forthcoming so that was um that was a that was a pretty neat experience for me uh, to meet someone like that. Did you have another question? I'm sorry. No, um, you, you answered okay? it beautifully. Is that okay? Okay. That was just great. Just great, okay, Judith. Thank you. All right. Absolutely. I'll, I'll pause. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, Suad, did you want to share some thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, I was invited by Becky and uh, I know Becky for some time. Uh, uh, I mean, she's one of the first people I connected with in Hamilton. And you know, Becky is so beautiful. She's so beautiful inside out. She inspires me actually. And she empowers me. And she's the one who introduced me to Center Three. I was a newcomer. I came to the you know, to the open studio of Sightlines she was managing. And uh, I spent great times here. Uh, so we, we hit it together, like we bonded somehow. <laughs> and then uh, she introduced me to Center 3 in different, uh, par in different like, you know, projects. And uh, this came up at the time I was really very busy but because it first came from Becky, I, I consider it dearly, like, you know. And uh, the other thing is, I was always comparing, you know, the intergenerational links between Canada and Sudan, my home country, where seniors live the, the same house or, I mean, place uh, with, uh, with younger people and interact all the time. And they have a big, big uh, place in the lives of the generations, younger generations. Uh, they are actually leaders in the, the setting of the family. Uh, and uh, no one can just pass them by, but you have to respect them. You have to give them due time, due respect, and you take advice from them all the time. And you care for them, of course. And uh, this is really like, uh, uh, a day-to-day -day intergenerational activity. <laughs> you don't need to have a project actually to, to get into that setup. And I was really interested in, uh, through my participation, is to get that 
uh, I mean, understanding through somehow. That's why when I was in, uh, I, and I get to know Ren, my partner, I really, uh, I, I, we won't, uh, me and Ren, well, we felt so comfortable with each other. And because Ren is like a natural, uh, a natural, uh, she does everything naturally. And she's so calm and respectful and uh, she, she expresses her feelings freely, openly. So I really, I, I really, uh, you know, I feel, I feel like, uh, I really like Ren. I feel towards her like, yeah, the kind of, <laughs> all the package of emotions that uh, links uh, younger people and seniors. And that, that, that got the conversation flowing like beautifully between both of us. And uh, what really got me to notice how Ren uh, reaction to the way I feel to, for her is the way she painted me. I mean, she painted me beautifully. I never imagined that I look so beautiful in my life, but through Ren's uh, in, uh, drawings. Uh, so we had a real great time. I never regretted joining the, pro the program and actually it became the most dear program of Center 3 to my heart. Yeah, so, what can I say more? <laughs> that, that is so tremendous. I mean, um, hearing your words uh, as someone who um, who have, has been sort of outside of the journey that you've all been on. Um, I mean, I know how I'm reacting uh, with, with complete heart. I'm, you know, I've, I've switched off my brain and I'm just listening with my heart right now. Um, but those those words, those reflections that you just shared, Suad, and, and you too, Judith, and of course, Ren, um, how does that sound to the artist facilitators in the group? So Alex and Shiler and Becky, when you hear comments like what have, has just been shared from Judith Sawad and Ren, um, what, what are you thinking in the context of the work that you do day to day? Um, Alex, did you wanna reflect? Yeah, no, like I, I couldn't have imagined that this this would have been the result um, at the start of writing this grant. Um, we were in such a different place um, back in, in March of 2020. And now to see it come to like full fruition now is so beautiful to see. And just like how everybody is able to open up and, and share and, and be vulnerable with one another. It's just so beautiful to see how these connections happen virtually even like um i'm just so used to seeing these connections happening in person and uh, but being able to shift it online and still build that relationship build that connection online is still so 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 beautiful and even just to have impact on one person's life like that it just means the world to me so hearing you all speak like it just fuels my my drive to continue this kind of work and um and I'm just so filled with love right now. So thank you for all of your reflections. Well, I wonder, you've, you've just provided me sort of like a natural segue into something I've, I've been really curious about. Um, you know, you just uh, referred Alex to um, uh, the fact that, you know, the project was sort of conceived originally um, sort of without uh, a heavy dependency on Zoom or other kinds of technologies for people to come together and to sort of create uh, uh, and preserve space for, for getting to know each other in meaningful ways uh, when you're not standing with the person next to you in the, in the same room. Um, and of course, due to the, due to the pandemic, uh, Mind the Gap developed mostly in the virtual realm, although we see some photographic evidence in the exhibition that you did manage to come together um, in person and to, and to you know, uh, not only to relate to each other, but to co-create together, uh, to make together, if you will. Um, I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering two things. The first question is, how did the pandemic complicate the project? And then the second question is, were there any unique or surprising things that happened because of the pandemic circumstances? So, um, because I, I suspect in looking at the work that, that, you know, there are answers to both of those questions. Um, so the first one was, how did the pandemic complicate the project? 
Uh, is there anyone on the call that like would like to um, take on that question first? Yeah, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, mm -hmm. If I may, uh, well, I think what I'm going to say will sound like uh, different because you know what? Um, for me, uh, the pandemic and going online was so helpful actually. Yeah, because you know what? Um, I'm an introvert. So that was really like a comfort zone for me, not going out, uh, not mixing with people and all that. The other thing is because I am um, a newcomer, uh, sort of a newcomer, I'm not a newcomer <laughs> anymore, or a new Canadian, let's call it. Uh, I'm used to using the internet to get in touch with my family yeah. and to communicate all over the world. I have a daughter who lives in Sweden, studies there. Another one who's married and lives in UK, a son who lives in uh, Uganda. Uh, so <laughs> not to count the extended family. So I'm really used to getting online and getting in touch with people. That's why the pandemic was actually helpful <laughs> in getting the setup and uh, online setup. That perspective is so interesting, Suad, and something I hadn't been thinking of. I'm so glad that you shared that. Um, what about you, Judith? You look poised to share some thoughts. <laughs> well, I'm going to jump in with the exact opposite. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I am an extrovert more more than I am an introvert. I'm probably right down the middle, but I am more of an extrovert. I like action. I like people in front of me. I like touching them. Blah blah blah. I was Sabomi couldn't have been more shy than I am not. And unfortunately, really unfortunately, on my part, I really wanted to get to know her more. She lives around the corner. <laughs> I so often extended to meet at the park, six feet apart, you know, because we both have a park nearby. Um, a, a lot of things, even, you know, an English teacher could have helped her anything with, with any of her essays. I even extended that. I said, listen, you ever get caught on, you know, some of these teachers demanding too much of you, you know, come on and see me. I know how to play the game. She never did. I never really connected with Sabomi, even when we were drawing in, in the backyard of Don Matheson's home. Uh, <laughs> she, Becky will see, she's just a very quiet, reflective young woman. And um, shared really openly when we had the closing of the eyes and, and the questions were given to us. She shared that so openly, I was like startled how much she opened up, but she was alone in her room answering those questions. So all in all, my gap stayed a gap. Hmm. As much as I, whatever I learned of her, I respect and love but my the gap is still there and i can only i could just let it be uh i think it's the way sabomi and i wanted her to take the lead it's the way sabomi wanted it quiet and look who's not here today and i'm <laughs> so sorry that she's not here today also the internet doesn't work for me seeing you on screen like this does not work for me um, it's, it's okay because it's the only thing we've got and thank goodness, but, um, that's why I'm at theater. Yeah. Please come see the play. Romeo and yeah. Rosalind is just up your alley. My God, it's so good. It's going to run this weekend and, and following. Um, I'm with actors, young actors, old actors, middle-aged actors and crew, and we are with each other. We have to wear our masks in the building, of course, but we are there. We're so present physically and I that that's what really stirs my my blood so you know all of this internet stuff doesn't work <laughs> for me <laughs> Judah thank you so much for for also just you know your forthright way um you and I have known each other a little bit over the last year because we've done some other things together and I always always welcome and value your um 
your frank, uh, you know, offerings. Um, I will say, uh, Sabomi worked really hard to be here today. Oh, good. And the timing just didn't work for her. I, I was hopeful, just as you were, that um, that she'd be able to join us. Um, as you mentioned, she uh, is a very busy young woman, <laughs> and uh, she has other commitments that she just couldn't. Uh, she just couldn't sort of fit this in with everything else. But um, but but all that to say is that um, you know it's interesting, and one of the things you've highlighted is that you know for some of us, this kind of interface, this kind of gathering that we're even doing right now. For some of us, that feels comfortable. It feels like, um, you know, Sawad, you, you, you described it really well in that you have learned to reach out and connect and stay connected and stay close with family all over the world. Um, and this is one of the ways in which you do that. So maybe this experience in a project for you um, felt closer to home than, for example, Judith, whose um, typical sort of creative gathering environment is you know, a busy theater center where people, you know, by necessity, they're performers, they're in the space, they're, you know, they, they're used to expressing really outwardly, right? Um, and I thought it was really interesting in the exhibition um, version of your, of your um, process, your journey, that we sense the difference in uh, the way in which people, uh, all of the participants in the project sort of, um, uh, their approach to the space that they were invite, invited into, the ways in which they wanted and needed to communicate, um, the ways in which, frankly, they didn't want to communicate. That was also really uh, apparent. And um, we're, we're sort of calling forth the energy of John Matheson because as the, uh, as the other artist facilitator on the project, she, um, her voice is very, uh, is very robust in the exhibition as well. And she said, you know, um, I'm interested in the tensions. I'm interested in what didn't work. Um, what didn't work in the way of sort of like, how do we lickety split quick, get to know each other and become fast friends? Well, maybe becoming friends in a really quick way isn't necessarily um, the point of the project. Yeah. Maybe that isn't the point. And I, I wonder if um, Shiler and Becky, as, as the other artists who were facilitating this work, if you have some thoughts along those lines. Tyler? Yeah, I think um, one thing that came to mind as you were talking, Judith, um, is that like the project now is called Mind the Gap. It's not called Close the Gap. Um, so it's like, like the gap is there and maybe like we're just acknowledging it and maybe that's all this all that came out of this project um and i think that's okay because i don't think everyone has to connect all the time and um and people can find and build relationships elsewhere as well um yeah so that, that was all i wanted to say about that and to also go back about COVID affecting the project and, and how it relates to the relationships, like for example, Ren is pretty far physically uh, from the rest of us. Um, I found out when I went to deliver her materials and it was like, I don't know, Ren, how far is Shelburne? About two hours maybe? Uh -huh. or not, maybe not quite, but anyway. So it's interesting that when the when COVID hit in the middle of like the beginning of the project and we had to pivot entirely and also sort of figure out co like we're trying to figure out the project also trying to figure out COVID um, and so Zoom we all basically were forced to get to know the Zoom uh, platform and so that definitely helped facilitate Ren and Suad's. Um, relationship and uh, ability to connect because otherwise I'm not exactly sure. I think we would have probably had to do it online anyhow, but it sort of evened it out in terms of uh, everyone having to meet this way, except for, I should mention the two sessions that I did in person uh, with Judith and Shibomi, as well as Janiel and Joanne in Hamilton. So Judith and Shibomi in Guelph in Don's backyard, and then Janiel and Joanne at um, Carter Park in Hamilton. We were able to make art in person, which was um, quite a treat for the time because it was uh, pretty novel in terms of COVID. 
But yeah, it's interesting to try to understand what it would have been like uh, if COVID never happened and what the project would have turned out to be if this wasn't the case. But I like what Shiler said about minding the gap, like acknowledging the gap and, and taking note of it. I think that's a huge takeaway from this whole project is being aware and acknowledging each other. And, and for me too, Becky, um, and also Shiler, and uh, your uh, reflections on the, on the sort of evolved brand of the project in Mind the Gap, to me also, Mind says care, like take care of that space. Like it's a, it's a, it's a caring, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a call to care, maybe I can phrase it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we really, you know, as, as um, visitors to the exhibition where we can see some of the outcomes of that caring, I think that that message is really um, is really very apparent in the work that there is a, a sort of duty to care for that space. Uh, sometimes caring means we reach across it and we can connect. And sometimes it means that that space is okay and it's good and healthy for this particular conversation or this particular relationship for that space to be a space that is tended from a distance. Um, and um, I know, I, I wondered if Ren, um, you had some, some thoughts. I, I saw your camera come on, not your camera, but your, um, your box on the screen sort of lit up for a moment. And I wondered if you had uh, something that you wanted to add to this part of the conversation. Yeah, I was gonna add that um, me being like so far away, or can you hear me? We can hear you, yep. Okay, so me being so far away and like, um having the opportunity to um like you know if I if if the COVID hadn't happened that I wouldn't have been that I wouldn't be here you know um but yeah I was gonna add that unfortunately I have to um in about three minutes I have to go log into my online class so but I was but it's great that I was able to like um, participate in this. I actually learned a lot and it was really fun, you know, and then I also connected with Suad a lot. But yeah, we got along really well. I think because me being an introvert also, I think that's why we got along so well. So yeah, that's what I wanted to add. Well, if I may say, Ren, thank you so very much for spending some time with us to get today. Um, I wish you well in, in the class you're about to log into, and uh, I hope you'll have a chance to see the exhibition in Guelph. Um, if you can't, we'll do everything in our power to uh, ensure that you have a good sense of the project from afar. Um, and I, I invite you just on your own time to, uh, to reach out and connect with me here in the museum, and I'll be sure to connect with you back. Um, yeah, thank you definitely. so much. Thanks, Ren. Thanks so much for coming. No problem. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. Ren, take care. See you. Bye. Bye. Uh, I'd like to say something to Judith. Uh, Judith, you mentioned that you have a, a theater group. Uh, can you tell me uh, if you have like newcomers as part of the of the group? Newcomers meaning new cast members or newcomers from other countries? What do you mean? Yeah, I'm newcomers to Canada. Like myself. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I just picked up a stage manager, Paris, from India. Uh, he's been here for a little while. Um, yes, we, we welcome. Um, I'm delighted with this particular um, performance because I have Juliet, who is also from India. Lovely, dark skin like you, Juliet, perfect. And we have um, a biracial actor, and I am delighted to see that on our stage. And I really try to welcome that. It's a hard, hard pull into our uh, theater. I think theater in this area, or maybe North America, period, it's got these pale faces up there all the time. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just not up to date anymore. And so I'm really trying to hook in with our cultural center called the Heritage uh, Cultural Center here in, in um, Guelph. Uh, it's a Black heritage uh, um, uh, group. I hope we could do things together because they are now building their own stage. And I thought, yay, 
and, you know, but Suad, um, I personally work on it. Uh, several other people of the board of, uh, board of directors are aware of that. And, but it's difficult. It's difficult to break through. Yeah, but you know what? If we met earlier, then I would have loved to join the, your group. I'm not very good at theater or acting or any part of oh, the, of the, of the, yeah. of the game, yeah. but I would love to join the group. It sounds like fun. Well, so, you're in, are you in Hamilton, Sua? I'm in Hamilton, yeah. Well, you have a lot of uh, little theaters in Hamilton. I, I, yeah. I mean, I want sure come here, but you know, <laughs> you've got lots to choose from in Dundas. Um, Throw Hamilton, if I recall. I used to live in Burlington, so I'm quite aware of Hamilton. Uh, I'll be I'll, I'll be looking for that now. It yes. Sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inspired it, by what you're doing. Yeah, and it helps a lot of extroverts. I've noticed a lot of actors are extroverts, but when they're on acting, wow, they're powerful. And isn't yeah. it true, uh, Judith, that um, for the 10 people you might have on stage, there's about 100 people behind the scenes uh, who are <laughs> who are working on oh. every production, right? <laughs> Um, the, the other thing is, too, that, um, you know, the beautiful thing about bringing artists together in a conversation such as today is that um, you are also opportunists. And so you, you raise the questions and the opportunities to each other every moment. And I absolutely love that. Um, and I, it's actually kind of a neat uh, stepping stone into sort of the next, I'll, I'll reorient us back to Mind the Gap, but um, to, to ask you a question uh, as artists, as creators in your communities and with each other, mm -hmm. um, how does a project like Mind the Gap create or shift meaning, make, meaning making or how we make meaning in the work we do? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if I if I may start, ahead. yeah, go ahead, Suad. Okay, thank you, Judith. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm very happy to see Tyler here, because you know through uh, the activities of uh, the project, I came to learn a lot with uh, from Tyler's comments. I mean, uh, when we're doing storytelling, she would uh, I mean, she she has like deep, deep, deep. Uh, 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 an analysis and she comes up with the right advice. And actually that helped me, uh, Vicky, when you asked me to write down the, my story. <laughs> so uh, I, yeah, I made you a lot of use of Tyler's comments and I thank you, Tyler. And I, I hope you, you prosper and we, 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 we came to know, we come to know a lot about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, one more thing. One more, <laughs> uh, one more thing is uh, actually I like the idea for the intergenerational uh, in, interconnection, and I carried that idea into a project that I'm running right now. I'm coordinating. The Tell project, us about it. <laughs> exactly. I told Becky right away. I stole that idea, you know, Becky. <laughs> uh, but actually, it works fine because when we're designing this project. I, I was starting to do, um, I'm starting to be part of this current program, the intergenerational program. And uh, I, so I like that idea so much and I carry it along. The project that I'm, I'm coordinating here right now is about digital literacy to Arabic speaking seniors in Hamilton. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, through the direct message of Center 3 uh, project, uh, we came uh, to, uh, 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 we were working on videos on digital literacy to help uh, the participants, I mean, gain some skills. And uh, we translated some of them into Arabic because I'm part of the project. We we're thinking of translating into different languages. And I was there, so we started with Arabic language. And then we came to the idea that why don't we try to show those videos to some uh, some participants from the Arabic speaking community uh, in order to uh, get their views and then develop more fine kind of videos uh, to put online for everyone to use. And now I'm, we are now in the execution part. We've done two workshops and we are, uh, we, we should, uh, uh, I mean, finish with three more and it's really a big success. <laughs> Excellent. That's so wonderful, Suad. I, I'm so grateful to you for sharing that. Um, I'm going to venture to suggest that uh, there's no um, 
taking of ideas. It's all part of one big long journey. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, let me talk more about the idea, taking the ideas, taking the ideas. Uh, because uh, when you come to digital literacy with seniors, you're always like doubting whether they are, uh, have the, the right kind of skill. So I suggested, uh, and uh, you know, from, uh, from my experience here that we can have a partner for each senior as uh, you know, a, a family member, a neighbor or something uh, who would accompany them during the workshops and help them with uh, solving, you know, uh, like a tech, uh, tech, uh, tech uh, assistant or something. And it's really, <laughs> it's a big success because even the partners now are taking part in the conversation. <laughs> For example, I used to say, Mac, Mac, <laughs> no, there is no Mac, you know, it said I, it's IIS, we should say. <laughs> and then this, this lady us say the question, do you always find that you need to correct him? <laughs> <laughs> As younger people, <laughs> they say yes. We insist on doing. <laughs> so it's really like it added. It's an added value to the to the program. I, I'm getting a small little taste, Suad, of how delightful it must be to be on a creative journey with you. <laughs> <laughs> all all of you folks on the call are nodding. Um, did anybody else want to sort of reflect on um, sort of the meaning making side of this project and how it sort of shifts the work, shifted possibly the work that you're doing now or informed it in some particular way? Well, can I go back to my my little uh, <laughs> my little heaven here? Sure. Um, yes, I'm not the only one, but we have been talking about youth groups. Our Christmas plays uh you know called christmas plays even that's old-fashioned i thought you know let's can we not name it something else but okay um these plays um are designed to bring in the youth of all ages so that's a good place to start i am one to i go into the high schools or contact the high schools for community hours for them because the building needs to be clean all around outside and and they don't care what they do because they want their hours and I just make sure they're having fun you know when they're working two to four hours and, and that's enough and so we they add up their community hours they're happy I'm happy and the theater looks grand um it's really important we keep telling uh we talk a lot about storytelling and storytelling is so important in whatever vehicle words on a page they are messages they are communicating players on a stage it's telling a story in some way they are they are giving you a message those messages no matter what they are are so important to all of us fine arts we say arts and first thing that usually comes to mind is paintings no that's fine arts arts means so many more venues all of them are storytelling in some way or not because well because we're human beings and that's us and that's what we're relating um i had to make up the acknowledgement for us at the opening of our play oh my gosh i spent a lot of time looking at different acknowledgements Guelph uh, Civic Museums is one of my favorites. And what you said today, uh, oh, um, Don, is one of my favorite things to, to hear. It just seems to be honest and heartfelt and um, real. And that's exactly what I wanted to do when my voice came on for an acknowledgement, for it to be real. So Shiler and uh, 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 Alex, you've got a lot of people around you who respect your stories and it's your stories now that are becoming more and more important women's stories black stories your stories i want to hear them i want to see them and um i think that's what I'm trying to do at our little theater as little influence as I have, but my voice, my voice is there. Um, 
So to thank you for what you said today, I'm taking it to heart. I was can see a project in the making. Dawn, you have to take the initiative. Hmm. <laughs> I'll write that one down. <laughs> um, if I may, though, um, uh, I want to just acknowledge that uh, Alex uh, really created the path for the work that we're doing in the museum uh, for how I think personally about my relationship to land and place and people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a journey. It's it's not it, it's a it's a it's a well we use we use the term forever journey. It doesn't have an end. We're just we're just on the path together. Um, so I, I encourage you, Judith, to do to think and do and absorb and talk and share and um, make it personal. Uh, I think that's um, you know, you're all storytellers. I know that for a fact, because I know uh, the work that you've uh, worked on together. And I think um, I think if more of this work happens uh, in this group, outside of this group, in the communities in which we live and work and play, um, I think the world will be a much better place than it is even today. So let's stay on that, stay on that path together. Um, we're, we're almost unbelievably, it seems to me, out of time today. But I wondered if I could ask you just one more question, which is, what do you hope, if there's one thing that you hope visitors to the exhibition will take away with them or understand about Mind the Gap, what would each of you say that thing would be? Maybe I'll start with you, Alex. Um, yeah, for sure. I think that um, like prior to the pandemic, our lifestyles were very much like go, go, go. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that viewers take away from this exhibition is to slow down and to be reflective. I know I'm, I'm taking that into consideration in my life as well and consider their own relationships. And, you know, just like taking that time to have fun and experiment with art, um, but also do things that like fill your cup. Um, and I just know how easy it is to get bogged down with everything happening in the world. But I think, you know, giving meaningful energy to somebody in your life and just laughing can, can be so healing. And, you know, like really kind of taking that, that time to do that, I think is so important. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, Shyler, did you have a, a sort of a, a thought that you'd like to share in terms of what, what folks may carry with them when they see the show? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think maybe my biggest thought about what I would like folks to carry with them after a show is um, to, yeah, like, if you're a young person, visit your elders. If you're an elder, um, accept visits from your from the young people around you. I think, uh, Suad, what you had said earlier about um, how back in Sudan, like, uh, elders being in, in the space was like just like a normal thing. Um, I know uh, at least it's not so much because um, in indigenous communities because of like displacement and stuff, but I know like that's uh, definitely also an idea that uh, my people and also Alex's people I'm assuming have. Um, and that it's like, I think it's a very like Western or, or like white, white European kind of thing to like separate um, generations. And I think um, when you had shared that, I was like, oh yeah, like I do think it like we need to kind of recenter those connections um, between all generations. And so that's, that's what I hope folks carry with them after. So well put, Shyler. Um, and we're not so different after all, are we? <laughs> um, Maybe because Shyler, you said you called uh, Suad's name. Maybe I'll turn that the the opportunity over to you, Suad. If there's something that you, one thing that you would love folks to carry with them in this project, what would it be? Well, for me, it's the same, uh, the same sense as Shyler just expressed. Uh, I just like to show uh, the sense of a haboba. You know, haboba is a senior person in the home. And Haboba is the grandmother, and uh, the word comes from Hub, Hub mm -hmm. Haboba, and Hub is love. So the loved one, uh, yeah, the grandmom is called the loved one. So I, I just want, I just want to that to seep through, being here a Haboba from Sudan, and 
connecting with Ren and uh, yeah, and, and with everyone here. I'm, uh, Alex, I haven't said enough about your role in this. I mean, your smile is, 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 is enough by its own. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your role very much here. And this is what I want to, to I mean, people who are watching this show to get this sense of love. Yeah. We are here all, we did a, a work that's really based on love. One more thing, uh, the story I've written, and it is uh, on exhibition, it's about my great grandfather. And my whole extended family is ecstatic about that story being at Gulf Museum. And they're following up and, and they would just like to attend, you know, the, um, whatever show they can attend to. So please don't put the, the, the link to that. I will. Yeah, I'll be in touch with everybody and um, I'll send you a uh, sort of uh, an invitation to be able to come to the exhibition for for those of you um, who are in the project itself and then your close family and friends uh, will make that uh, invitation go out to all of you so that you can uh, if you if you can get to Guelph to see it, we would love, love, love to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. What okay. about the vir a virtual link? Is there a virtual link? Yep. Sure, that would be lovely. I, I love I love the message of love. <laughs> that and it and and it's palpable in the exhibition. Um, one of the words that I that I use uh, used when we were installing the show was um, that it's gentle. It, it's a very gentle space, and uh, it doesn't mean that that the exhibition itself doesn't. Um, that it doesn't carry a lot of profound insight and sharing because it most certainly does, but even the even the most difficult narratives are shared with such kindness and so, so gently that I think that's really what for me Suad uh, I carry with it is and, and what you've said is that it's love it's um I've said a whole lot of words and you said love and they mean the same thing so uh, I'm grateful for for calling that forth um Becky did you have a last uh sort of passing thought that you wanted to invite folks to consider well, I would like to jump off of the love theme and suggest that the vulnerability from that was put forth from each of the participants in this exhibition, in their work, will invite vulnerability and invoke vulnerability within the viewer. Yeah. And that will be, I think, have everlasting effects into their lives and, um, I think every I think the community will be stronger for it. Vulnerability breeds vulnerability, and I appreciate everyone's soft hearts. Soft hearts and tough spines, because we have work to do. <laughs> last <laughs> last word over to you, Judith. Well, it's a lovely open space. And uh, when I was experiencing it, I thought, wow, everybody was so open, open, you know, to others. And I thought, yeah, openness, which is like a vulnerability, of course. That's what I, I took from it, an openness. Just be open. Even though I was embarrassed when Dawn was saying, go, you know, when she was telling me what to do with my computer. She said, well, just go up there, Judith. You know, the little, I said, well, now everything disappeared. I <laughs> felt, oh, geez, boy, I look like a dummy. And then I thought, well, okay, that's the way it was. Just be open to it. <laughs> you know what, Judith? Um, we all understand that space. And we've all been in the in that chair. In fact, I was at the start of this call. So uh, absolutely. Um, thank you all so very much. Um, I'll just remind our listeners that uh, the exhibition of Mind the Gap, Intergenerational Connectivity Between Seniors and Youths is on now at the Guelph Civic Museum until March 27th. Um, check out Guelph Museum's website and socials for programs, announcements, and, and to learn how you can get involved. Um, I'll say too that uh, a month from now on Wednesday, April 20th at noon, uh, the April edition of History Bites focuses on um, the textile collection um, in the Guelph Civic Museum, which is a real gem. Um, and there's a lot of material in this collection that, that doesn't see the light of day often because of how 
how um, literally vulnerable the materials themselves are. And our, our uh, guide on that day for, for April's History Bites will be Anna Patterson, who has been with the museum for a long time and has a real uh, deep love and affection for this collection, which I'm sure you'll hear and feel from her when she, uh, she guides the next History Bites. So hope you can join us then too. Until then, thanks everyone. Be well, stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.